Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we're back to Pinball Arcade. So, after hitting, like, the worst table I've seen so far, then we had Taxi, which was a great table, and, and Black Knight 2000, which is a great table. So, I'm feeling like, um, specifically after taking a break, if we managed to just get one good table out of these last four for the 1980s, I would feel fairly satisfied with the selection. Selection only. There still are some problems with the emulation. Today we're looking at Bone Busters from 1989, which is a table I don't recognize, but it does look like it has a skeleton skull uh, on top of the backboard. This might be a table that is just straight up kind of too spooky. Like, you can also kind of see that this is from 1989, because if this was a 2021 table, I wouldn't be surprised if if a company would be uh, afraid of having skeletons because they were trying to sell pinball tables in the China market, and the Chinese don't allow, I don't think they legally even allow skeletons to be depicted uh, for some great censorship reason. I'm you sure. Ready? So they're going to have to go fairly kid-friendly and, and comedy around this. Um, it is, even by 89, a point where he, the pirate stories and skeletons and things like that were starting to ever so slowly leave the public consciousness and uh, would have been increasingly just less emphasized um let's see the last time i even saw a walking skeleton in anything other than a low effort video game listing would be probably the pirates of the caribbean disney movies which um no i'm not even sure there are walking skeletons in that it might be going back as far as an Army of Darkness movie or something like that. Yeah, they they, they kind of just disappeared uh, for several reasons. Anyways, Bone Busters 1989 is one of one of a kind tables from Gottlob designed by Ray Tanzer and Constiano Mitchell with its fast flowing layout complemented by an eccentric art package and comical sound set. It's no wonder this table is highly valued by collectors. Starting with a tricky skill shot over the mini play field, this game challenges the player at every turn. Send the ball flying through the air via the long jump ramp, which this will be the first jump ramp we've seen in a table, to start two, three, or four multiball. First four multiball game, too, we would have seen. We will see. Earn the drop target awards to discover. Liz's surprise and score the opera jackpot for big points. When normal gameplay ends, the table features a bonus round, three ball frenzy mode at the top to top off a great score. And don't forget to listen up to Old Mean One Eye, the talking skeleton at the top of the back box. 2,000 of these units were pr produced. So, highly collectible. Not so many tables actually produced. Um, and even in this demo mode, the camera does not pan up high enough to see the talking skeleton skull. And that's almost certainly because the demo mode in which the camera zooms in and zooms out is just a hardcore coded program that they ran on top of every single table without giving any specific table any specific considerations. So let's explore the table. See, yeah, here you are, once again. I can tilt the camera that high, and that high only. Yeah, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in Disney probably had a skeleton at some point. And I wouldn't be surprised if they snuck that out. But the, the remake TV shows, I mean remake movies, had more sea monsters and not actual skeletons. And it's not just the Chinese that 
that don't like gore, but the Chinese in specific don't like skeletons, where the Japanese, uh, I know, specifically don't like gore and tend to censor games more in their own native country than they they do in the rest of the world if there is gory elements. So what is this here? It looks to me like there's a kickback here. Otherwise, this is some kind of ramp that straight up drains to an out lane, but I, I don't see. It doesn't look like you could make it to the out lane there, so it's got to be a kickback. That would be insane, too, to have a ramp that specifically drains to the to the out lane. Uh, and it's directly connected. Yeah, I've never seen this table before. Um, <clears throat> top button is the train switching gate. The little button is the flipper, so... There's also a secondary button, apparently, and this is an odd instructions. Hmm. So you shoot up here, and it seemingly flips a wall, or this wall moves, or this part here is actually clear and you can go under that. You must go under it from the looks of it. And then you go up here and you can sink down there which I think probably bounces it out this direction and then back out this direction. Here we see Santa Claus and here we see a um, clown. So some of this feels like it might very well be referencing taxi because Santa Claus is in a taxi there and that might be referencing cyclone these are all tables we saw so they're, they're, they're almost creating a equivalent to a Marvel Cinematic Universe in the pinball tables so like you can shoot up this ramp although that would be a very tight shot I don't think you really could shoot up that ramp I think you have to fall down that ramp and then you have directly parallel side targets that you pretty much have to hit with that but at least they're not angled then you have a jump that is seemingly trying to go right in the middle and they made it fairly impossible to miss or, or if you do miss it, it seems to go nowhere I don't know what the deal with these springs on the side are. Um, if you overshoot the skill shots, you can apparently use a flipper to, I don't know what, flip the ball against the wall? It's not like you're really going to get any further. It's not like it's going to go up more. It feels like that flipper should be down. Is it held up? It by default and it inverts. Hmm. There's just a ton of table art here. Uh, certainly. That is also going to be slightly a distraction. Ton of lights. There's another sh alleyway up here. Uh, I assume that's a loop that that goes somewhere. Although I don't know where. I actually would go it may be just a standing target yeah it's just a standing target you have a fairly difficult shot here see the the problem i could see with this oh there is a sink target shot back there too um the the thing i would think about this table is that it feels very much like it's thematically designed to be a halloween style table much like Halloween games, uh, there's just always a subsection of gamers that wouldn't want to play this. Uh, looking at this backboard alone, I could easily see, even if kids weren't scared of this, you could easily say, see parents who didn't want to have their kids waste money or spend money in an arcade telling them, no, you can't play that, that looks too scary, or just helicopter parents and overly 
uh, concerned parents telling them, no, you can't play this. So, so you've lost one subset of your audience immediately by going with this theme. So they must have really loved this theme. It does kind of have that Tales from the Crypt vibe, and in all fairness, there is almost certainly a Tales from the Crypt pinball table, so maybe there was some competition attempt happening here. Uh, maybe it was uh, in 89 more of a thing that that there would have been less concerned parents. Arguably, there is a decent chance that if, if you're a parent that didn't want your kids spending money in an arcade or were overly concerned about kids, what kids saw in 89, you wouldn't let them go to the arcade in general. So that audience may have already been mostly lost. But even in this flyer, as we zoom up, um, you can see that the artwork here is different and it is no way more centered around Ghostbusters yeah I guess Ghostbusters by 89 had probably caught the minds of children uh, oddly the Ghostbusters movie 1 is not really for kids and Ghostbusters 2 is not as good in most people's opinion than Ghostbusters 1 but even that is not super focused as a kid-friendly um, movie. I think once they had introduced a cartoon and once the TVs have been airing TV edits for Ghostbusters 1 and 2, it had become much more of a kid thing. I definitely remember when I was a kid uh, playing with Ghostbusters toys, so that might have been right around 89 come to think of it hmm. but it does also highlight something here that the art here does not make me think for a second Ghostbusters uh, not and it's also I suppose worth mentioning that there is basically only one skeleton in the Ghostbusters uh, first two movies anyways I guess in the backboard there is four Ghostbusters being drawn. So this must have been at some point a um I forgot to look at the standard goals. Score skill shots, start multiple, earn the drop target award award, earn an award extra ball to start a bonus round. This must have been either a uh Something that was uh, going to be a licensed property, or something that was competing against a licensed property. Interesting, it makes a sound effect when the ball lands back down there, that there's an actual sensor. So you gotta get the right amount of pressure there. And it is the right bump that is, um, that flips the flipper. So, in this case, you kinda need to do this. See, that will launch you to that area. And apparently that is the skill shot. Well, that seems easy. Fairly easy skill shot. I thought it was way more difficult than that. Hmm. So, like, as soon as you dra drained, you, uh start the bonus round which only lasts for a few seconds and then it stops you also worth mentioning so you would have gotten that that standard goal with one game played 
Uh, I think. Yeah, I really don't think there's a way to avoid that. You just have to hit this somewhat str somewhat weakly. I didn't hit the center lane hard enough. That locked the ball. For this table in particular, this lo this feels like a table that is kind of hard to keep it get a good angle on. Like ideally, I want that angle, but there's a lot of stuff up table that I'm having a hard time seeing. Uh, so. Maybe this angle? It really just feels like there isn't a very good angle. Hmm. I see where the skill shot becomes difficult because you gotta give it just enough momentum. Let's just hit this. So, I don't know if there's something at the top of that jump that, that I, I have to hit. Or if there's nothing going on. I didn't even know there was a roundabout in the back sides. I'm having a hard time figuring out where you even lock all the balls. So that was a two ball multi ball, which does mean to me that there probably is a way to lock more balls in other places. <laughs> so, like, pretty much after this game, I have to look at the table again. Because there's so much going on here. And I can't even properly evaluate a table if I don't know what is on it, and I can't tell the difference between painted art. This might be a table that's a, that has an argument for being uh, stripped of its table art or remastered in some way um, with less less busy art. It'd almost be like a D-Master, but you, you'd still call it a, a remaster. Uh, hmm. and we're, we hear sound effects, and so I assume that whenever some of these sound effects are played, the skull on top speaks or moves its mouth in conjunction with either pre-programmed movements or with just a up and down motion based on how loud the certain sound effects are. Like in Teddy Rubs Rubskin, which would have also been a toy at that time. Yeah. Uh, I have to say it's somewhat disappointing that you could play two games, not even know what, how the table plays, and get on the high score list. Alright, so, you want to hit this at some point, so that it can lock a ball there. That's one lock when it's lit. 
This also is a lock when it's lit. Plunger skill shot. Pull back easy. Okay, I now understand that. I don't fully understand how you would get back up this way. Like, something is going to shoot the ball up here and then back here and then you can use the flipper. I also don't understand how these lights are lighting in segments with the coils wrapped around them. It does seem like there's just a bent piece of metal here to guide the ball downward so it won't hit the glass. They were clearly afraid that the ball was going to hit the glass, which with a shot so close up to the top of the table, that's not super likely. Um, there will be tables, certainly, that we'll see that don't bother to have that. This has another lock over here. We never even shot up there, so... <clears throat> See, if this was a De Los De, De Morte game, not only would that be interestingly multicultural, it would at least thematically make a little bit more sense to me in 2021. Um, where is the other lock? You have one bumper here, which that bumper doesn't really play a role. And then I didn't even see this whole lane. Are there standing targets on the side of that lane? I don't even think there are. I think that's just art. So, where would the, the... We've seen three locks. I guess that's the max. Three locks, and then you could start a four-ball multi-ball by launching the ball there, which then seems to just spit the ball back out to the bottom of it. It's not moving the ball around or anything. Okay, I think I've got it. And now we're trying to get the extra ball on the drop down targets. We don't know how to get the extra ball. So we'll have to come back and investigate that later. If that matters. You know what I need to do for a table like this is I need to have the ball follow. So I need to shoot it like this. And then we're gonna have to follow the ball as it moves around. There's not really a zoom in function. It, it's it's more a case of just do you want it at at five degrees? And in all realisticness, the way I'm playing the the tables right now is not really how you would play pinball. You would be much higher up, unless you were an incredibly short person. Ooh, why are there two balls? Well, that's gonna be hard to pull off. That, that was the bonus game and it took me too long. Notice how this table would have bef definitely been better if it had an auto launcher. We've yet to see, I think, a table with an auto launcher. It would also be better if it had a center peg, like so many other tables. It would also be better if it had a ball saver, like so many other tables. We still have yet to see that that happen. So I need to get really good at shooting that far left lane shot up there. And honestly, it just doesn't feel like there's enough power in these flippers to do that. Which inevitably, we we're going to have to run into at least one table where it is fairly difficult, if not impossible, to actually make a shot if the flippers are too weak. And you would kind of expect that in pro mode, 
you would be able to adjust that more often. I mean, that, that would be a simple physics change. Alright, so I snuck in. I locked the ball. These, ta these flippers don't feel as long as some of the other flippers we played with. And I wouldn't be surprised one bit if that's ex exactly true. That there are actually several different slightly smaller flippers that are made. So I could start a two ball multi ball if I'm lucky. But I'd like to be able to figure out how to lock more balls. That skill shot area in the left is blinking with a lock. And then that time I didn't even start a bonus, so. There is something to the idea of starting a bonus. Yeah. This is one of these tables that kind of nicely has. Alright, so I locked the ball. Knows how it has to kill, kick the ball out quickly before we, before the other ball reaches there. Hmm. It's telling me to jump the bridge, which I assume is the middle part of this. But you can see that's a fairly tight shot too. I'm having a real hard time finding good shots. And I guess you just don't always start bonus modes. Hmm. And there is an actual way to drain on the left out lane. Although, in all fairness, that seems to be fairly hard to do. I have drained down the center lane multiple times. Uh, that bumper is just not in a good position. I would have to assume that if this was supposed to be a Ghostbusters licensed game, the reason why it didn't actually become a Ghostbusters line, uh, uh, licensed game has probably nothing to do with the actual quality of the product. It's not like Ghostbuster toys were terrible. In fact, if anything, they were actually pretty good quality for their time. But I would have to assume it would have been just a, a license negotiation thing or somebody being difficult to, to license their likenesses to things. That probably is why... No, I, I imagine it probably isn't even that much. Probably was just a movie studio license negotiation thing. It didn't have anything to do with like any of the actors. Oh, this this table sucks though. So I would like to think that they, somebody played this table and said, "Oh no, this is just not good enough to have the Ghostbusters license on it." But I, I'm fairly certain that is not the case. See, it started bonus mode, but without an auto launcher, you have to just basically pull the plunger, and there's no way that you could actually pull that off while you were playing. You'd have to have somebody next to you pulling the plunger as soon as the ball gets fed back into the machine.
Let's look how you earn the extra ball. To earn the extra ball on Bone Busters, complete the roll under switch by shooting the right loop. Okay. When extra ball is lit here, extra ball can be lit by completing the right loop awards in order. <laughs> Shoot the right loop once to collect each award. Extra ball can also be lit by collecting the extra ball drop down target awards. Turn the extra ball, complete all five drop turn targets when light extra ball is lit. The light award is toggled each time that is hit or when the right in lane is completed when the next car served is lit or when the left in lane is completed when the next car served is lit. So this is like a uh, car hop restaurant that the, uh, the skeletons are serving. Hmm. Okay, so a lot of stuff on the right middle of the table, in other words, which means either getting the ball to the left a lot, or getting it up to the left flipper and letting it do its business multiple times but there's no hold on those also so I, I would pretty much just have to have a really good game we've certainly seen that with a lot of tables where the, the only way you'd get the goals or really progress in the challenges uh, for the tables at all would be uh, if you just can keep the ball in play and have a good good game. Apparently, the flipper here doesn't block that right lane, so that they've got it constricted fairly much to just the left lane of the two. Which that doesn't feel particularly nice. I would have much preferred a way to kind of cheat it. I'm just hitting the ball. It's already locked. And I don't know if I went into the left out lane when the lock is lit. If that would actually uh, lead to the ball being locked or if that would just drain the ball too. Is it possible to get an extra ball or extra um, extra ball in that mode? I'm not sure it is. I would be surprised if you could actually. I imagine in the bonus mode that that is there only for score, not for replay, not for extra balls, not for earning even credits I imagine. I've, I, I'd have to question whether this table even is particularly generous about giving credits. We're not seeing a match or anything at the end. If anything, this might be a table that's highly collectible because it was not particularly popular. Like 2,000 units being created is not a incredibly small number of units, but it also isn't a huge number of units either. But yeah, so far I'm not seeing really anything I like here. I'm 
and shooting that center jump lane may be getting me scores, but it's not really helping me progress towards multiball. Uh, actually, I've I, I, I'm shocked to just now look at the score and realize that I'm at like a million because it, it did not feel like I had earned a million. This, this table doesn't give rewarding sounds so much as it's just playing its music, which I will say the music is fine, but it's not particularly great. I'd say they've failed to make this feel kid-friendly in particular. It doesn't feel particularly spooky either. Uh, I'd say Haunted Mansion still probably sounds a little bit more spookier. But having a skeleton just stare at you also is uh, a problem. Like, I can see kids getting nightmares off of just seeing a one-eyed skeleton stare at you on a table easily. Yeah, and I, d I don't really see a reason to belabor this, either. I don't really see a reason to play any more. Let's see. What were the dips? Track sound on. Let's put that on. Playfield special. Extra ball special. Balls per game five. Match apparently is on. Novelty is normal. Let's score 500k. Uh, game mode extra ball slash replay. Extra ball is better for trying to get high scores. Longer or shorter, you could even make the extra ball special timing shorter. Bonus ball feature on. So that's not a lot of options. Hmm. Hmm. And then wait, take it sweet time to load the back up. Uh, I wonder if it, it's actually simulating how long it actually would have taken the pinball table to load new data. Right. So we'll use the ball control and we'll just see what we can do here. Alright, so using the ball control we can hit these these drop down targets fairly easily. Can we go up this lane? And then all the way down. I think we can, so. Getting the extra ball. Probably not super hard. Actually, not, not super hard at all. When you do that. So that, that, that was an extra ball. Or special. And hitting that changes the reward, but I'm not sure which car actually is the extra ball there. But otherwise, it doesn't change the reward, so you can you can hit the same thing and get the same reward over and over again, which seems pretty insane. Hitting. I can't even I can't even hit the target that is back behind there. I know there is a target back behind there. But I think that all that does is light the spinners. Alright. Let's see. You can't lock that. Nor do I know what you do to actually 
increase the lock there. So there's definitely some instructions I'm missing. But I don't even know what else I'm looking for. Hey, bonehead. Yeah, there, there's so little on this table, really. Am I supposed to hit that? Am I supposed to go down there? I don't even really know how to get to that pop-up area. seems really weird that there's an entire section that I just don't understand. And see, if you sneak the ball back behind the bridge, it doesn't do anything. That, that pretty much leaves all the shots down to... Wow. That, that was stupid of me. Uh, what this pretty much does... Did that lock? I guess maybe it did. Yeah, all I can do now is try to start like the four ball multi ball before the game is over with five balls and try and uh, lock the ball on the tramway at the far back left of the shot. I could give myself like free balls, extra balls, and, and increase my chances if I just wanted to see uh, a four, four ball multi ball. Of course, that would also be something I would almost certainly see anyways. That's another case where the left flipper, you really have to tap it. Otherwise, you're going to be doomed. If I was actually to play, going to play this table a whole lot, then this would be... Uh, I would see the four ball multi ball eventually anyways, I imagine. Unfortunately, I'm not going to play it this ball not lot. Because it kind of sucks. Hmm. I have a bone to pick with you. Yeah. First of all, I'd I would have said in an early production <laughs> meeting, if we're gonna do a Ghostbusters uh, joke uh, or ripoff, we probably shouldn't have hey, creepy anything creepy. It's got to be cartoony. And having this face in front of you is is too creepy. Um, I would also have said, let's not do just skeletons. Let's let's have some ghosts and ghouls and other elements, just skeletons alone. Uh, I would have liked this slingshot. Probably change the angles a little bit so you have a slightly higher chance of getting it. But I'm not sure if this this flipper here needs to exist because honestly, if you make that skill shot, you should just immediately drain to this and probably lock the first ball. That's fine. I would hate to. I'd, I'd kind of like to get rid of the left upper flipper in this roundabout because that is a tight shot. And instead, I would like to open up the area so that you could hit the roundabout with the left flipper. Or at the very least, make it so you could hit the roundabout with the left flipper, which would mean moving these drop-down targets to this row, 
which there would have been no problem with that. That would have opened up the play field better, and this is something that needs more more play fields area if you're going to have to do these long shots. Which, of course, that would be my next thing to adjust would be to pull this shot lower. I've said several times that having a ramp in the middle of the table would be a great way to stuff the ball from draining directly down the center. And in all fairness, even Here's without a center peg, we've never had a situation where the ball is drained drain down the center for the games, few games I've played. Hey, did you hear the one about the traveling salesman? Mm. But, yeah, I would move this all down. Maybe you could keep this loop. Um, but maybe elongate it some more. Otherwise, you move all of this down, and this then you have an A, B, C, D lane. And instead of having this drain down into the right flipper in lane, you would want to see this come up here to an ABC with lane selection. That way you're back to more classic oh, pinball de table design. Um, and then you could have put a bumper on the back hey, side no, of this, okay. or if not two bumpers, maybe get rid of this bumper, completely get rid of the shot or... <laughs> make this shot closer so like all of these shots are really really far away um if you stretch out a ramp like this and and have it start right about here then the angle doesn't have to be as sharp you don't have to hit quite as hard uh and as precise Here's one you, eye. you can hit harder and it still work you can see on this ramp it is fairly wide hey, anyways for that reason this is a table that noticeably doesn't have any bumps in between ramps because there's not really a need for that. Well, there are little bumps, but not big wide ones, which we've seen on other tables. And that is specifically because of how hard and how far from the flipper these, these shots are anyways. Um, I've got a bone to pick with you. They are very well may have been a lot more nostalgia and love for this table if it did have a Ghostbusters tie-in, whether it was a Ghostbusters cartoon tie-in, which may have been 89, or the Ghostbusters movie themselves tie-in. I'm out of here. I would, would have probably gotten the license first before the developing the table. Showing a taxi and showing Santa Claus and showing a clown from like Cyclone. Or, or, although in this time it's a clown to represent like a McDonald's that, that is. I mean, that's old fashioned where uh, I'm not sure McDonald's ever delivered on skates. Um, you do introduce an interesting idea here where you have these long-haired skeletons wearing skirts and not shirts. Because then that does introduce the idea that the skeletons know that they're naked. And then you, you run, play with that concept again here. You have a skeleton that straight up has a shirt on. And if I can see correctly, I think I actually see little black dots to represent nipples. Um... Same over here. So, this is a weird skeleton, uh, half nudist, half, half topless world. I guess there was supposed to be a narrative that these were the four uh, Ghostbusters, no, okay. uh, type characters, and maybe it's two girls and two guys now, <laughs> going for more of an Archie feel. A lot of this does feel like this could have been very much inspired from Archie comics. Um, also, uh, so I guess the, the narrative and the theme would have been that these guys were fighting the skeletons. But it certainly doesn't feel like you hey, are playing as the, the skeletons. Yeah, there is a blonde Ghostbuster girl. And then... Two guys. Yeah. 
Yeah, certainly doesn't feel like you're playing as the skeletons, though. It feels like you're just hanging out more with the with the bad guys in the story, the skeletons. I assume the skeletons are the bad guys in the story. Uh, yep. Not really a lot to say there. I, I'm stretching it even at 50 minutes. That not an interesting table, per se. And we do have Elvira here, so we can see that the theme of spooky games is coming into the 89s. And here you have, like, Phantom of the Opera at this point. And then Terminator and Adam's Family. So early 90s was definitely into that. Dracula, it, it, in a funny way, that almost becomes an established thing that goes on for, I think, a decent time where you start to have the spooky characters. Whereas, if we go back and look, let's see, of the selection of tables, Haunted House is 82, so you... You have a whole seven years uh, of the curation of tables that um, in which nothing happened. And you can see there's skeleton skulls in Haunted House, but they also have cobwebs, and there's a whole bunch of cartoony ghosts, and uh, if anything, Haunted House is lacking um, any spooky elements for what it is it has like crows and spider webs and spiders and ghosts but they they mostly focus on the ghost theme you can definitely see that the art style is a uh, much more kid friendly in 82 than the 89 there's a demon picture on the side there um, and I wouldn't even particularly say that I think Haunted House is much better of a table. It's not even one I really like, but I would say compared to Bone Busters, it's a better table. It has a more consistent gimmick, to say the least, in the underplay field. We haven't seen an underplay field in a table in, in a while, too, so we, we may be done with those. Uh, also, anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.